ですよ。
Graduates, friends, family, welcome. My name is Dan Hedberg, and as principal of Levitt High School, I would like to thank you all, and all of you, there's a lot of us here tonight, for coming on out. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, well, just have so many claws in the front row. Looking good. Hey, there are uh, many events in our lives, many rites of passages, uh, many defining moments that we will forever Tonight's graduation is surely to be one of those. We have amazing young people in the class of 2023, and some of them are going to come up here and display some talents for us, and all of them are going to have an opportunity to have their moment in the sun as they cross the stage tonight. And before we start, I do want to recognize a few special guests in attendance. Um, sitting behind me is Superintendent Dr. Craig Sproles. Uh, we have our chair board, uh, Rich Cunningham, and our entire school board, if you'd please rise, um, and we'd like to give you a round of applause to Bethel School Board. Thank you for being here. And our Bethel teaching staff, I'm seeing kindergarten to high school teachers over there. Welcome, glad you're here. Looking good. <laughs> They might be more ready than the students tonight. We're going to keep an eye over here. That's true. Now, as, uh, as we're all here tonight, there's, I'm sure, plenty of Royal High alumni. If you're a high school alumni in the audience, would you stand up to be recognized, please? Where are we at? There's one. Okay, I see you over there. 
Yeah! Hey, hey! And the teacher, too! Looking good! Class of 2023, you're here, you're in the middle of it, you're in the middle of it all, right? You've got friends, you've got family all around. And tonight, um, it's gonna feel quick, um, but remember, take your time and cherish every moment. Last weekend, I ran into a principal colleague of mine, and he gave me some good advice on, uh, on giving a graduation speech. He said, Dan, be humble, be grateful, and for the sake of the seniors, be brief. They've dealt with you for four years. And they've had enough, right? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so I will indeed um, be brief tonight, and I hope that you know I am humbled and grateful to be your principal. Graduates, in about 90 minutes, everything changes for you. In about 90 minutes, you'll turn your tassel from one side to the other, and you'll throw your cap up in the air, and inevitably there'll be some of those air horns and cowbells, and there'll be confetti, and laughter and pictures and it will all be a symbolic representation of your journey in education to date and it's one that is well deserved. Now tonight is a time for celebration and based on what y'all did to the science wing uh, last Wednesday, I know y'all know I celebrate. Okay? Thank you for that. That was lovely. Thousands of balloons everywhere. You're very thoughtful. Thank you. Um, and while it is a time for celebration, it's also a time for reflection. And tonight, all of you who come across this stage having juggled a variety of experiences through high school, academics, athletics, clubs, jobs, family responsibilities, all of you will come across this stage having overcome various obstacles and uncertainties and challenges. And all of you Every single one of you will cross this stage with skills and knowledge and friendships that will indeed last a lifetime. And those are the things that you will carry on through the rest of your lives. So as you carry on through the next chapters, I encourage you to keep on learning, keep on growing, and making sure that you're staying connected to one another because you come from a very special place right here at Lamont High School, and that is a bond that will bind you forever. Uh, class of 2023, thank you for being here tonight and allowing us to celebrate you. With that being said, I'd like to turn the mic over to senior Andrew Beauchamp. A little known facts about Andrew. Andrew loves coffee with way too much creamer, and he really dislikes rocket math. Uh, during his time at Willamette High School, Andrew was brave enough to serve as a senior editor for the yearbook. Next year, he'll be heading to Linfield University, where he'll go from being a Wolverine to a Wildcat. And tonight, uh, we got some other wildcats in the house. That's great. Uh, tonight, he will be sharing his speech with us entitled The Marathon. Good afternoon. Uh, as Mr. Hedberg said, my name is Andrew Bochamp, and I've had the privilege of attending Lamp High School for these four years, in person and online. Well, Maybe not as much of a privilege to attend online school, but, you know, it's what it is. Moving on, I'd like to take a moment to thank the friends, teachers, staff, and my family who have supported me along this arduous yet spectacular journey. <laughs> Without their encouragement and guidance, I would not be standing here today. Our journey as a class, from freshman to senior, was one paved with successes and roadblocks alike. Rowan High School may not be the most well-funded, our classrooms may not be the most well-ventilated, and our parking lot may not have as many spaces as we need, if we all can remember the senior prank from last year. Uh, but we survived somehow. We are actually one of the last classes to have experienced the pandemic in high school. And the effect of that reverberates in the opportunities, achievements, and activities that we lost. Yet, our culinary team, which started competing after a long hiatus, achieved third in state competition. <laughs> Women's water polo was very competitive in our league and made it to playoffs. Yeah. 
our chess team also went to state. And the men's soccer team won awards and placed six in a division populated with much larger schools. Yearbook, which I am senior editor of, achieved our goal of getting the yearbook out this year instead of next. <laughs> By the way, if you have any complaints, tell the next senior editor. And I'd be remiss to leave out how speech and debate qualified for nationals. Yeah. This is among the many other accomplishments that our sports and clubs achieved just this year. Let us be proud of who we are and where we came from as we take our next steps into the unknown. Needless to say, our time here was not all sunshine and rainbows, but because of the hardships we faced, we are tougher people today. Today is not only for those who worked incredibly hard to finish the full IB track, but also for those who worked a job to support their families and still attended classes. It's for the first generation students who are fulfilling their dreams. For those who stayed up late at night supporting friends and family who are in need, who still showed up ready to engage with the day. Today is also for the people who struggled to get a footing and survived on a day-by-day -day basis. Personally, junior year was a struggle for me, mentally and physically, as I navigated taxing classes in a return to normal, as I think many of us did. And I would find myself laying in bed, unable to get up or do anything because of the crushing anxiety and stress of school. Those days were some of my hardest. Yet, the important piece is that we are all here. Think of where we came from. Fresh-faced freshmen standing intimidated outside of our home in class. And now we are here, about to make the next big step. Through a pandemic, through tons of homework which we scrambled to complete, through community school, social reform, and cumulative tests, you are on the precipice of the next stage. Our presence here, taking part in a tradition that will outlive us, is truly indicative of our resolve and determination as a class. I truly believe that the experiences that we gained here will stay with us forever. And it all starts now. We have all worked so hard to get to this point, and like when you're trained to run, every time you do it, it gets easier. It was no simple task getting here, and I applaud you all. We are still standing, and as a class, we hit the ground running four years ago, not in a sprint, but in a marathon. And I have full confidence that our class, the class of 2023, went through the next stages of our journey at full speed ahead into whatever the future may have. It has truly been an honor, and thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Well said. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Nolan Top Scholars and Honors Diploma graduates. If you please refer to your program for a complete list of our Honors Diploma graduates. This year we have 30 Honors Diploma graduates, which means they completed 28 credits, advanced classwork, and at least 150 hours of community service. Now that is impressive. Congratulations. The class of 2023 is also has 48 students being recognized as top scholars. Now, this is an amazing feat, as each one of these top scholars finished their high school career with a, at least a 4.0 rated GPA. Uh, top scholars, congratulations. And speaking of Wolverines that we're very proud of, it's my pleasure to introduce Haley Parrish to the stage. <laughs> Haley is a proud member of our senior AVID class, and next year she will be continuing her studies at the University of Oregon. When Haley isn't at Lambeth High School, and she's normally around here helping out in some fashion, she loves to watch her favorite shows, Psych and Friends. And this evening, she is psyched to share a few words 
with her friends. She gets a little nervous. <laughs> You're gonna be great. Are you ready? It's gonna be fun. Take your time, enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> How, how would you like? Do you want to download it? I want to be able to read at the same time. That's good. Um, before I start telling my story, um, I want to thank my mom, who I would not be here today without. Oh, maybe not. We'll turn you up. Keep talking. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm just thanking my mom because I love her and she's amazing. Um, she's also graduating next week. She's getting her bachelor's, so... Okay. Um, remember kindergarten? Think back all those years ago when we started our educational journey. In kindergarten, you'll most likely five and turning six. We were all just learning how to read and write, figuring out how to do some basic steps like coloring in the lines and how to interact with each other. Something I am still working on. Most six-year-olds are not learning how to operate a camera that is older than you, but I was. At six years old, my mom trusted me with her little red camera so I could take pictures of everything I wanted to remember. However, because I was curious, everything I wanted to remember was almost everything. I walked around my aunt's salon and snapped pictures of flowers and vases, toys from the toy chest, the rails, people, anything that caught my attention. Because of my inexperience, though, most of my photos didn't turn out too well. I didn't understand the concept of overexposure and just wanted my photos to look good. I didn't know that I needed just the right amount of light as well as the right amount of darkness. Seven months after I turned 12, I received the news that would become the darkness in the photo of my life. My mostly absent father passed away on September 18, 2017 from alcohol poisoning. In photography terms, my dad's death was the positive space in my photo, and when it became, it sent, when it became the central focus of my picture. All that surrounded it was negative space. The tears I shed, the tests I failed from lack of focus, the funeral I attended all a month later, negative space, which felt true to me. Everything was negative and my dad's death was ruining my life. Unlike the photos six-year-old me took, too bright and unfocused, my photo was now too dark, depressed and dull, obsessed with what I thought was wrong with my life and myself. Now, years later, standing in front of you all, spending these precious moments with my graduating class, who I have become would be unfathomable to the 12-year-old me that took photos in the dark. For the time, we worked on our high school yearbook. There, Mr. Bischoff taught me the basics of photography. In every good photo, there is a balance between the light and the dark. My first field experience for yearbook was at a football game way down in Medford. I was all alone and had zero family reference for how to go about taking flawless photos of teenagers running at top speed up and down 100 yards of turf. When taking photos on a football field at 9 p.m. in the dark with an obnoxiously bright seating lighting, getting a good shot of players becomes a daunting task. Luckily, a professional photographer was also at the game and saw me struggling with the expensive camera that could not have been more different from the tiny red one I started with. It was... Hmm. It's windy. Um... While his name evades me, what I remember best is his kindness and offering his help in explaining some of the more complicated functions of the camera. At the game's end, I had finally taken photos where the focus was clear. The players. The negative space was blurred, but still able to tell a story, and neither the light nor dark overpowered the shot. In photography, there needs to be a balance between light and dark. If a photo is too bright, you can't truly appreciate the positive space. If a photo is too dark, the negative space takes over and the focus is no longer distinguishable. The background and foreground fight for dominance. Similarly, darkness or challenges we face are necessary enough to appreciate the light or times of celebration. 
When the fruit of your life is overexposed, it can be hard to understand the value of the light and good without the shadows and bad things. The shadows bring the positive space into focus and make the best parts stand out. Knowing that life requires, between a ba- life requires a balance between the positive and the negative, I'm better able to appreciate all the good in my life, like my amazing friends and teachers, without focusing too much on the hard stuff that I know that we have to deal with. The same goes for the negative. I know that not everything is going to be perfect and bad things are going to happen, but they're only part of the picture. It's also important to remember that, as the kind stranger at the football game was there to help me, there will be other helping hands along the way. We will never have to do anything alone as long as we learn how to ask for and accept the help we deserve. I know that many of us have had similar life-altering experiences that that we never would have imagined. From family members and other loved ones passing, untimely emergencies, and the global pandemic we all dealt with, we all worked hard to keep moving forward. At the same time, it is increasingly valuable to take time to acknowledge the wonderful in our lives too. From small to large, from turning on that one assignment to graduating high school, we have done so much worth celebrating at this moment. Throughout our lives, we have all had our own photos where the dark or light was overpowering and took the lead. However, my persistence has brought us to one of the greatest accomplishments of our academic career thus far. Wow. Yes, the picture of our lives is still in progress. Looking back at what we've persevered through tells me that we're going to be more than just okay. We're going to thrive. Thank you. Yeah, you've got to come fix it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Early. Our mark of the Bethel School District is a close working relationship between our schools, the district office, and the school board. It's a meaningful collaboration that helps our students succeed. Whether in the classroom or in the boardroom, these are the people who work tirelessly to help pave the way to graduation and beyond. It is my privilege to introduce Bethel School District Superintendent Craig Sproles to share a few words. So one of the things I love um, about Bethel is the way that we surround our schools. And I think there are lots and lots of people um, for graduates who are working behind the scenes every day um, to support you and love you and give you a launch into the next step of of the world. Some of those are our school board members. When I joined uh, Bethel two years ago, our school board was the second longest serving school board in the state. There's 197 school districts in the state, and Bethel was one of the longest lived school boards to be able to serve and give back to the community. We also have a whole group of people right here who spend hours and hours and hours thinking about all of you. We look at data, we look at how you're doing in school, we think about you as people um, and our group of teachers. And so parents and community, let's celebrate our teachers just really quick with a round of applause. They even got a new one. So I also just want to thank all of you for coming tonight and all of you in the stands. Many, many of you live in Bethel and live in our community. And you notice this big blue building right here? You've all helped paid for that. That is Cascade Middle School. You might have, when you were walking in, you might have known us to do softball field on the turf field when you were walking in. And that shows not only strong leadership from our school board, It shows strong support from our community. So thank you for showing up today. We were uh, were planning for about 4,500 people. Um, I think we've greatly exceeded that. Um, And it doesn't surprise me because we are Bethel. Um, Students, graduates, uh, when I was thinking back to, I was asking uh, Principal Edberg up here, do you remember your high school graduation? Um, I'm 55, so it was a long time ago for me, and I don't actually remember my graduation. I don't remember one speech that was given. I don't for sure remember the superintendent. Um, But what I do remember are the people who I was sitting next to, um, and I remember the people that helped me get there. So take a moment, look up into the stands, look over to 
the teachers that you've uh, been with all of this time, those are the people who supported you and got you here. If you need to thank one of them, say it today. If you need to give one of your uh, friends a hug and tell them how meaningful they've been to you, do it today. Um, because tomorrow, um, you're no longer Willamette students, you're Willamette graduates. So it's a big time right now for all of you. So take the time to say what needs to be said today and thank all of the people who have come. So thank you for coming, supporting us, and graduates, congratulations. Thank you, Superintendent Rolls, for your leadership and support. Our final speech of the evening is presented by Anna Kilgore. There she comes. Anna is a prime example of the strengths, humor, and resilience that defines the class of 2023. Anna is an avid senior who will be attending Lane Curie College in the fall to study psychology. In addition to giving a special shout out to her mother, Anna would also like to expand a thank you to the two additional honored guests in attendance tonight. Former police chief, police chief Robert Morris and current senator James Manning. On behalf of Anna and the Bethel School District, thank you for attending. It gets, a, it gets a little bit windy, so I'm going to put them on over here. And then, yeah, if it blows over, it's all good. But otherwise, you rock okay. it last time. You'll rock it again. You'll still have fun with how you're going to do Really it. slow? So, like, if it goes super, super slow, you won't kick me off. I won't kick you off. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got my word. Okay. 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 Um, okay. I would like to start by thanking the following. Thank you to the graduation committee for, uh, oh, yes, okay, is that better, is that good, like better, good, yeah. okay, okay, <laughs> you want me to just, okay, from the top, from the top. okay, <laughs> I would like to start by thanking the following, thank you to the graduation committee for allowing me to speak today, I would also like to thank the teachers at Willamette for supporting the students through these very normal and hormonal years, but enough about them, let's talk about me. Kilgore and I'm terrified of change. At least I was, don't get me wrong, I still am, but now I understand its importance and how valuable it is. When I was in middle school, I had a certain expectation of what my high school experience would look like. I thought my high school story would be like something out of high school musical or the breakfast club for the older generations out there today. <laughs> but those dreams were all shattered when my family fell apart right before my high school journey even began. I was terrified by how quickly my whole world fell apart and how I couldn't keep all the changes, I, how I couldn't keep up with all the changes. So I decided to hide from the change the best way I knew, by pushing away the people that loved me the most. What once was a happy, outgoing child turned into a person that didn't have drive, willingness to try, or any plans for the future. A person that even my own mother hardly recognized. I embraced the darkness with open arms because I didn't want to go through another person leaving me. So I left them all first, shutting everyone out because I was petrified of what would happen if I lost control or did not have control. Four months later, when I did finally start high school, I was extremely discouraged from even attempting the goals I had once set out for myself. As you know, our first two years of high school didn't go to plan. My freshman year definitely wasn't wonderful. I hated all my classes, so what was the point in trying? My grades were like, Bruno, we don't talk about them. I was scared of failing, but I was also terrified of trying. I didn't want to try at all, because to fail when I had tried my best was the worst thing that could happen. But my mom, she never gave up on me. She's always seen the very best in me, even when no one else did. To this day, I still struggle to see what she saw in that bloody snot nose 14 year old, but I'm glad that she did. I continued making worse and worse choices, and I was spiraling out of control, and then suddenly came March 2020. At first, I loved the pandemic. Two week break from school just when the doctor had ordered. But then, two weeks turned to four, four weeks turned to two months, and the next thing you know, our whole 10th grade was all online. After avoiding every math assignment in the first 12 weeks and most other schoolwork, I realized where I had been living my life wasn't sustainable. 
Staying up all night, binge going on TikTok, definitely wasn't helping my mental health. 14 hours a day on animal crossing wasn't going to help me achieve my dreams either. I came to find out that it was actually scary and much more pointless to live life without trying than to try and fail. It struck me that I could never move forward if I was stuck in my room on, on social media all day. There would always be things that I can't control, and accepting that was my very first step to becoming a better person. Change is scary, it's terrifying, but I realized that if I did change, I would just keep diving deeper and deeper into the hole that I was falling into. So while the pandemic was awful, it was also kind of a blessing for me. It woke me up to a person that I was becoming and the opportunities that I was wasting. So with the help of my mom, my avid teacher, Ms. Peterson, Chief, Chief Bob, and the countless other people that believed in me, I started to turn on my academic trajectory. Slowly, I started to see my potential and all of the things that I could accomplish. It is because of them that I'm standing here in front of you today. I've learned that growing and changing is a part of life, and life will pass you by unless you learn to change with it. This concept of change has continued to be the focal point of the last two years of my life, which have been filled with all the emotions that come from trying new things, like sadness, happiness, frustration, and excitement. Last year, I took my first IV class, which is something I never would have dreamed of doing if it wasn't for my support system and my avid family. My GPA went from a freshman 2.5 to a senior 3.4, rounded up, of course. I went to a school dance last year, and I hated it. I also went to a football game, but I didn't really like that either. But I wouldn't have known I absolutely despised those things if I didn't try. There are also some things that I did end up liking. It turns out I love psychology and childcare, and this year's prom was much, much better than the dance that I went to. It was just really hot. The point is, I never would have learned these things about myself if I continued to hide away from the world. Looking back, I've realized there will always be things that I can't control. I learned that if I wanted to get better, I would have to let go of the things that were haunting me from my past, the things that were keeping me from my future. Do any of you remember back in freshman year in Wolverine 101 when we were talking about the circle of control? I don't because it was four years ago and also that class wasn't exactly a crowd favorite. <laughs> but I wish I would have paid attention to it then. Circle of control is a concept of thinking. Basically, there are things in life that we can control and things that we can. And it's an understanding that you can't always change or influence what's around you. But you can change and influence what's inside of you. Realizing that was a start to my healing. And like I said, letting go of control can be scary, but it also can be a little bit comforting. Because when I tell myself and that that's all I can really do, I can actually let it go. I can let my past self go and she can let go of me. And we can both heal. I can let that little girl go inside of me. And I can let her end her long journey so I can continue mine. And even our high school journey has now come to an end. The rest of our journeys still await us. Time waits for no one and neither will our futures. So we will chase greatness with the memories of this place held near to our hearts. We will forge on with the labeling sense of alignment on our minds. This place has changed me and it's changed all of us. Each and every one of us has learned to bend and flex with the winds of change in our own ways, without breaking to its harsh, never seen blows. And we will continue to do so effortlessly and with grace while we're cheat whilst achieving greatness like no one has ever seen. Change is scary. The thought of never knowing what comes next and knowing you can't stop it from arriving has always terrified me. But I truly believe that if we know who we are, time can never change us for the worse. I used to lie awake at night, wondering who I am. But as I stand before you today, I can tell you I finally know who I am. These four years have transformed me into my mother's strength, patience, and love, Miss Peterson's kindness, optimis optimism, and my best friend Bree's resilience, generosity, and humor. And I know who we are. We are the class of 2023, and we will be the ones that dare to challenge and successfully change this world. Change is not something I fear anymore. It's not something that I cower away from. 
I embrace change with open arms, knowing that I couldn't have become who I am without it. And I will continue to do so, knowing that I cannot become the person who I am to be without time and most importantly, change. Thank you, Anna. That was wonderful. I'm very proud of you. Well done. <laughs> Now, before we begin the presentation of the graduates, I would like to please take just a moment to recognize and to honor all of those who are unable to be with us here this evening. And although they may not be with us here in person, they are very much here in our hearts. And in recognition of all those that we wish were here that were unable to be, we do an honorary chair representing a space for them with us tonight. Please take a moment of silence with me. Thank you. And now begins the biggest celebration of the evening. The recognition of each and every one of our graduates. It's time. I'd like to invite Leanna Parrish to the stage. Curtis. Graduates, here's a reminder of how this is going to work, okay? In just a few minutes, I'll ask the first row to stand up, and then we'll proceed all the way down. Make sure you've got your name card right now. Secure it. You've got it ready to go. That's your ticket on the stage. Well done. When you come up on the stage, uh, you will come right over here, Curtis. He'll then uh, pass your card up to Leanna, and when you come across the stage, you'll stop with me. And then, uh, Dr. Schroes, will you step up here, please? How about that? Good. And... And uh, thank you, board chair, coming in. You will give a couple of handshakes here, and then Mr. Nelson and Mr. Stearns will have your diplomas to hand out to you. Again, as you cross this stage, take your time, right? Both of those cameras. We've got a professional talking photographers here. You've got your friends and family taking photos. So take your time, relax, and enjoy. Once you step off, please make sure you stop with Miss Black to get your uh, professional photo taken, and then go back to see your counselors on the very back there. Okay? Um, and so at this time, will the first row graduates please stand up and make your way to Curtis. Austin James Mask Renfro. And we're back. Isabella Josefina Lucero. Reese Elizabeth Jensen, <laughs> Jenna Ashley Norris, <laughs> Gavin Patrick. 
Which one? Raven Lee Kossi. Caitlin Lynn Dale. Abigail Paris Smith. Jordan Anthony Thatcher. Jamaica Layla Hash Maggie Johnston Ellie Reese Krebs Ella Baker David Bradley Logan. Willie Danielle Bidden. Ashley Kennedy Hogrett. Emily Lynn Anderson. Austin Ritter. Sovereign Walker. Will Walters. Will Lithium. Jordan Foster. Lena Evans. Leila Elisa Ramos. Jalen Jimmy. Kyle Basinger. Drew Stevens. Josiah Cervantes. Kaden Morrison. Josh Oshaniki. <laughs> Emily Sophia Bonham. <laughs> Brett Eugene Thompson. <laughs> Jacob Taylor. <laughs> Tristan Lindsay. James McGowan, Caden McCullough, Zayden Anthony Conovad, Avery Carlson, William Zyler, Daniel Muggleston, 
Jackson Kelly. <laughs> Eugene Bowman. Michaela K. Hill. Olivia Morris. Mila Zweig. Patrick Joe Bochamp. Thank you so much. Thank you. Connor Goodright. Lisa Allen. Alma Sheets. Sabara Hopkins. Kaylin Barrett. Abigail Owings. Andrea Nicole Geronimo Vasquez. Denise Lopez Chimuna. Kelly Green. Taylor Mondragon. <laughs> Holly Nesslin. Delfino Re Honorato. Faber Page Long. Aliasin Morales Alvarez, India Jenkins, Karen Cervantes, Mason Stubbs, Georgia Bratland. Sophia Grace Gribble, Sydney Elizabeth Bamford, Angel Maria Arredondo Clark, Taylor Trice. <laughs> Denise Patricia Ruiz Nieto Zamora. Jackson Miller. Kathleen Miller. Lily Suzanne Chung. Alexis Thompson. Joy Oster, Gabriella Gracie Marshall, Jose Luis Salik, Renato Terraza Zacara, Guillermo Terán Catalan. Simpson, 
Mercedes Mandel, Vicky Chow, Dylan Thomas Silverstein, Evan Everett, Adelou Farrar, Casey Giovanni Avalera, Kevin Ernesto Monte, Seren Bjorn Hega, Lestat Van Horn, Abby Gail Taylor, Connor Blake, Tacoma Wesson, Tyler Pearson, Brandon Levi Mortensen, Caleb Wilder, Lacey Nicole Maldonado, Marlon Overa. Daniel Gonzalez, Leslie Marine, Aurora Lee Bachman, 
Jake Dykstra. Delilah Fisher. Ryan Fox. McKinley Robbins. Ryan Mobley. Kylie Subia. Kevin Reed. Sam Nguyen. Toby Sanders. Jocelyn Rush. Riley Brooke Campbell. Brooke Fisher. Chase Robert. Stevie Lee Freitas. James Hall, Haley Nagel, Nyla Shalina Bitts, Zachary Crawford, Channa Nicholson, Katrina Hall. Emily Jasmine Garcia Cruz. Katia Isabel Castillo. Amarani Vasquez Contreras. Alec Tapia. Crystal Mora Garcia. Junior Alanis. Daniel Contreras, Giovanni Jimenez Lopez, Moises Prieto Cruz, Alberto Jesus Lopez Ramirez, Mary Caitlin Sandowski, Brianna Aguilar. Natalia K. Bell, Adriana Pena, Kendall Kruzner, Naomi Elena Shimal, Andres San Vicente, Trayton Michael. Anderson, Bryson Farrell, Benjamin Fettinger, Tyler Hughes, Elijah James Moore, Hayden Cobb, Jedediah James Mayberry, Gavin Johnson, Devin Carter, Maya Lynn McQueen Turner, Laura Jim Juba, Emma Jean Dawkins, Ashley Rainbow Weaver, McKenna Grace Harrison. Margarita Alessia Fulian. Michael Aaron Gunter. Serena Bree Torres. Rose Marie Forcier. Jane Taylor Shaw. Anna Johnson. 
Justine Ray. Matthias Anderson. Pedro Jose Torres Guardado. Jamie Bartlett. Ethan Navin Gonzalez. Javon DeMarco, Jordan Daniel Ahmed, Jasmine Vasquez Martinez, Ashley Aparicio, Alessandra Teofilo, Yeah. Elisa Balay, Magdalena Maria Benedetti, Kendall Marie Jermaine, Bailey Ravenhill, Della Misha Young. Johnny Lee Tienda, Anaya Lene Fouts, Edith Nadeja Dan Mehan, Marissa Ann Adler, Carol Anders Peterson. Ryan Sebastian Howland, 
Sarai Hernandez, Jacob Jeremy Stecker, Zataya Raymond Hogue, David Connor Nesbitt, Logan Parker Hart, Brandon Steiner, Jern Scott Sands, Riley Remington, Devin Quest, Jack Reynolds, Mason Lee Roy. Mason Lane, Gavin Scott Miller, Brandon Scott Knight, Derek William Rutland, Robbie F. Cunningham, Quinn Mason Glenn McCormick. Zachary Manta. Okay, graduates, here we are. It's that time. Please stand up and put on your graduation cap. Let that tassel be dangling over your right ear. As the principal of the Willamette High School, I certify that these seniors have met all of the requirements set forth by the state of Oregon and the Bethel School District. And by the power vested in me, I hereby declare the class of 2023 to be graduates of Willamette High School. You may turn your tassels and toss your cap. It has been my pleasure serving as your principal.